Or this race I skipped. Yeah. And I went to California to, and I brought a load of weed in and it's into San Francisco. The weed, I brought in 100, that, that, that year 135,000 pounds of grass. In 1986, everyone knew Randy Lanier was fast. He just shattered an Andretti record to become the Indy 500 Rookie of the Year. But what no one knew at the time was he was financing his racing career as one of the country's biggest drug kingpins, smuggling barges full of marijuana into the United States. That crime sent him away to life in prison without parole until his unexpected release last year. And for the first time in nearly three decades, he returns to racing this weekend at Mid-Ohio. You haven't been in a car until, until today, right? It was your first time in a car. Haven't been to Mid-Ohio or any racetrack in the last 29 years. Uh, really haven't been out in, in society in 29 years. I was charged with being the principal administrator of a criminal enterprise that imported marijuana and grossed $10 million in 12 months. So it, it got me a, a natural death sentence, life with no parole. When I read that Randy was getting out of jail, I, I have a Facebook group called Racebook. And I posted on Racebook that uh, Rally Baby should get Randy Lanier to come drive for us. And uh, I was kidding. But a couple of people took the idea seriously, and so I followed up on it, and you know, here we are. And I, I haven't regretted a second of it. So you brought him down for the race, or brought him up from Florida for this and everything? Bespoke Bacon uh, helped us bring Randy to the race. We got permission from his parole officer to fly him up from Florida. How'd you get your start in racing? Got my start in racing uh, in the 70s. SCCA uh, went to a car show at Miami Beach Convention Center. Ended up going to a SCCA event, got my competition license, and bought a 356 Porsche Speedster and started racing that throughout the southeastern United States. I had some good luck and um, good cars to drive, um, so moved up fairly quick. Was it 83 you went to Le Mans, right? 1982, yeah. uh, went to Le Mans with uh, a BB512 Ferrari, going to France, and the Ferrari team stayed in a 56 bedroom chateau and it was all for the Ferrari team. And at that moment in my life, I said, this is something I want to really pursue. I came back and got some rides uh, in IMSA and uh, just progressed from there until finally in 1984, I put my own team together, named it Blue Thunder Racing and uh, won the championship that year. Yeah. yeah, you can sit over here. I got all kinds of little stuff I brought. I don't know, some of it's so old. And these are some of the races. Uh, this is Sebring. Uh, I took second place in that, that race. Yeah, that's Road Atlanta. Uh, I didn't go make it to that race. Uh, I had a load of marijuana coming in that week. <laughs> I, did. I, I did. The week I brought the load in, I shot down to LA Grand Prix, won the LA Grand Prix, and... Um, one thing I was amazed and, at and about... And bought a Hatteras. <laughs> I, I was always amazed at just the sheer amount of like, quantity of drugs you were able to bring to this country. Like, how did you ever get that stuff past customs? I mean, this wasn't some in, inconsequential amount of, yeah. of, of, of well, marijuana. Some of it wasn't passed through customs. Uh, we had spots, uh, unloading spots that we didn't have to clear. And then some of them I cleared customs by having the, the marijuana stuffed in um, the ballast of a large barge okay, yeah. where you That's pump water. salt water, really. Mm -hmm. So we had false, I welded salt, uh, fake uh, compartments, put the weed in the bottom, put salt water on the top. This is the LA Grand Prix. I won this race, and right behind me was Al Holbert and Derek Bell. Charlotte 500, this was in May the 6th, May the 20th, I win the Charlotte 500, so now I'm having, I've won three races in a row and won and, and leading in the championship. So everybody's going, well, where's this team coming from? We fly in Lear jets and had unlimited budget. What, was it just to finance racing or was it just the money was insane or the drug scene well, it, back then? It or? started out not to just finance racing. It, it, I, I grew up in South Florida and by the time I was 19, I was running loads of marijuana from the Bahamas into the United States. On uh, uh, my, one of my first boats I bought was a 27-foot Magnum. Mm -hmm. And that progressed to a 28-foot, to a 36-foot cigarette, uh, to a 65-foot yacht, to an 80-foot yacht, to 300-foot barges and tugboats. The lifestyle and the money was, was kind of addictive in a way. Uh, you get caught up in in the easy money, 
and um, and the racing then it, it was easy to have no budget back then uh, to to race and compete against Ford, Jaguar, Porsche. Uh, I had no budget and uh, not sure what kind of budget they had, but I could do just as much testing as they could, and and uh, it showed. Uh, we started winning races when we uh, started uh, stepping up to the plate and doing all the testing. I thought it was working out good during the 80s when I was importing it. Uh, the lifestyle um, supported my racing career, but it ended in a, a bad situation for me, and I spent the last 27 years in federal prison. October the 15th, 2014, and it was an amazing feeling to walk out and be free. Whatever karma I have done and sowed, it brought me freedom, and here I'm out here now racing with AER. Hopefully I may be able to, uh, to compete in some other series. We were joking uh, on the way from the airport up to town that he hadn't driven a stick in about 30 years, and uh, He'd only started driving, you know, recently, and I think he was a little bit nervous as to whether or not it would come back, but it looks like it's like, just like riding a bike. He had me out coaching yesterday, and he's yelling at me to heel toe, and, you know, he, he, he got it right back. Well, it was your first time out in a race car in almost 30 years. How, how did it feel? Loved it. I had fun. Kind of more competed against myself. As the stint went on, I got more comfortable. I'll be glad when I know I'm driving at the level that I'm capable of. It's well, a little disappointing a little bit when you're with me because I like to feel that I'm giving it my all and I know I'm not yet, but um, it's a slow process, I can see that. I have no doubt in my mind that I can be as quick as anybody here.